So you answered a ton of things in your book, a ton of questions that I had, a ton of nuances. It was, it, you answered a ton of stuff. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of checking things off um, to get into some, get in some more nitty gritty. Like I had a question about cholesterol and it being determined by the genes and the genes alone. Uh -huh. um, and then the, and then our, our, our prescriptions of statins and other, um, what is it? PK, PK9 inhibitor or something like that. CSK9 um, inhibitors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so what is, what is the mechanism without trying to go into too much detail? What is the mechanism behind the lowering of our cholesterol? Is it deprivation to a certain degree that our body can't create it? Yeah, so it depends on which drug you're talking about. You've got PCSK9 inhibitors. You, you've got HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors. You've got bile mm -hmm. salt sequesterants. You've got many different cholesterol-lowering medications. They all serve the ultimate ulterior motive, really, of getting the cholesterol, particularly your LDL, um, mm -hmm. down. It's going to somehow interfere with your natural biological processes to produce the cholesterol that the genes deem appropriate to have within the body at any right. given instance in time. Um, the ones that I'm familiar with, for example, HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, there's an enzyme called a HMG-CoA reductase. Anything that ends in ACE, you can immediately assume is an enzyme. So you may have heard okay. of like lactase. That's mm -hmm. the enzyme that breaks apart lactose into glucose and galactose for use, for example. So anything, salivary amylase, you know, you may have heard of that right. before. Yeah, so they're all yeah. enzymes. Well, this enzyme specifically is involved in basically, how do I put this to be as broad as possible? It's involved in cholesterol synthesis, but it's through specifically manipulation of the, one of the primary intermediates in biochemistry, um, mm -hmm. acetyl-CoA. So you've got acetyl-CoA in the body that is produced through the Krebs cycle, or well, not produced through the Krebs cycle, produced through other pathways like beta-oxidation, glycolysis, mm -hmm. and then it enters. It's the primary starting substrate for um, the Krebs cycle, basically. It, it's, it's introduced into the Krebs cycle. But it has many different pathways that it can go through besides the Krebs cycle. Right. When it goes through, it can go through another pathway, and it's through – it. this is involved in cholesterol synthesis. And one of the primary enzymes in that pathway – is HMG-CoA reductase. HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors do exactly what they say. They inhibit the enzyme. The problem, they inhibit. Yeah. The problem is assuming that um, if you inhibit an enzyme that's involved in one pathway, that the enzyme itself is only involved in one pathway. It's not. It's involved right. in many other pathways, particularly if you actually, if you think of HMG-CoA reductase as like the top of a tree, or really mm -hmm. think of it as the top of a hierarchy, You've got multiple different, now you've got like a branch here and you've got three different pathways that's involved in it. And then these three pathways go through another set of pathways. And you've got a whole pyramid that you're interfering with whenever you interfere okay. with one pathway. Now, if you yeah. have no other choice, like someone's going to die and you have to give them something like that. Well, okay, great. But that's not, this is not a situation. They think this is a situation that that thought process is valid in thinking, but it's not because mm -hmm. cholesterol, as you know, is not going to cause heart disease. So Correct. what they do is they inhibit this pathway. And one of the ways in which this drug works is when it inhibits that pathway, sure, it absolutely interferes with cholesterol synthesis. So actual endogenous synthesis of cholesterol is one of the things it interferes mm -hmm. with. But also your production of CoQ enzymes right. uh, in, the, in the body. So CoQ enzymes uh, they are a mobile transport. It's, they're often called mobile transport proteins in your electron mm -hmm. transport chain in your mitochondria, uh, except they're not made of protein. Interestingly enough, it's actually one of the only enzymes that's not made of protein. So they're a mobile transport molecule, really. Okay. That are, it's, it's basically it, it's involved in shuttling electrons through the electron transport chain in the mitochondria. The problem is that if you have any disruption in that chain, your ability to produce energy is going to be at the very least slowed. It's going to be inhibited. Mm -hmm. you have enough of an inhibition, what's going to happen is the mitochondria are going to initiate apoptosis to the cell and it's going to die. Okay. It's all a spectrum. If you inhibit it slightly, it's not going to die, but if you oh, right. too much, yeah, then yeah. it's going to, it's just, it's, it's going to give up. Right. Mm -hmm. What you'll often see is that there are associations with statin taking populations and what is it called? 
I think it's rhabdomyolysis. Oh yeah. Rhabdo. Yeah. yeah. And which wow. is mainly characterized by too little muscle mass. Like you get muscle soreness and you also get a stripping of muscle mass off of the body. Right. Um, and well, I think that the mechanism, again, I'm very logically consistent. Association doesn't equal causation, but if it's, <laughs> right. causal, if it's a causal relationship, if we're going to speculate, if we're going to assume that it is and perform some mechanistic speculation, I think the mechanism is very clear as to why that association exists, which mm -hmm. is that my, muscle cells are the most dense in mitochondria, like with the most dense. Your, your heart, for example, every heart cell has between five to 8,000 mitochondria in one cell. It's got a lot in, yeah, okay. a lot, a lot. And so you can imagine that if you have a drug that will inhibit the electron transport chain of every single mitochondrion in the body, mm -hmm. that the, the cells that require the most oxidative phosphorylation activity from mm -hmm. the mitochondria, they are going to be the ones to suffer the most or even first, actually. Right. And so muscle cells, very highly energy, high energy demand. And so that can, that makes total sense as to why that would happen. Um, what else? Because again, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to deviate too far away from what your question actually involves. You've got HMG CoA reductase inhibitors. And yes, it's involved in inhibiting that. Also, it seems that it's, mm -hmm. a, it's involved in inhibiting myelin production as well, which is right. why massive association as well between statin taking populations and ALS. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. An invariably fatal condition. Um, the, the, this is actually another one of my questions is the, is the, uh, myelination and the association between, uh, early onset of Alzheimer's dementia, Parkinson's disease. I think um, that is, I think, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I think that is definitely a myelination problem because all of those are neurologically based and myelin sheathing right. does exactly what the name suggests, which is sheath the neurons from any abrasions and any externalities, e extrinsic factors that are going to pose a problem to it in terms of you know damage to the oh, oh yep, there we go. yeah that, <laughs> it cut out again <laughs> man I, um no but i think that the ner i think they're all neurological issues they're all neurological conditions and myelin sheathing mm -hmm. does exactly what the name suggests which is sheath the neurons from extrinsic factors that would abrade it in some way to interfere with its ability to regenerate the cells for example um right something like this something to that degree I think that that's why. Again, I keep using that word. I those words. I think because again, when it comes yeah. to associations, but you got to you got to admit it's a tough an association of of a relative increased incidence of in the thousands of percentage points is tough to ignore. It it, it is quite tough to ignore. So yeah. that that's that's what I say about that. In terms of PCSK9 inhibitors, I'm actually not familiar with what they do. This is why I need to look into pharmacology a bit more. Um, okay. That's not, I'm not familiar enough with them. Bile salt sequestrants, that makes sense. I mean, they're, they're basically, it, it's mm -hmm. bile salts themselves have cholesterol in them and to mm -hmm. sequester something is to take something up. So I presume that the drug is going to take up bile salts themselves in order to prevent reabsorption of cholesterol. That's basically what gotcha. I would presume is the case. Those I would actually think are less offensive to the system because they're not actively mm -hmm. interfering with genes. And so right. you're not actively throwing a wrench into the system. It's kind of like putting, it's kind of like having acid reflux medications that just reduce the amount of stomach fluid you have. It's not going to, right. it's not going to be a good thing. You're going to be absorbing less nutrition and you could be causing yourself, you could be raising your propensity for developing illnesses because you have less stomach acidity, but mm -hmm. it's not actively interfering with genes to the degree that HMG coy reductase inhibitors are, I think. So if you're going to put them on a, like a, a ranking system, I think that those are less offensive. But I mean, it's like what you said at the beginning, less bad isn't great necessarily. Like it, it, it could be less offensive. It doesn't mean that you should be doing it. So um, right. all of them, all of them, of course, they, they involve interfering to some extent with what the body wants to happen though. Uh, mm -hmm. what it's what it what it deems to be appropriate and that's what that was what my claim was in the book which is in isolation the claim isn't enough to say that your cholesterol levels don't matter that's why i went into further detail but in isolation so in isolation it doesn't count uh, it does it's not applicable or, or sufficient however the claim itself is still true which is whatever your cholesterol levels are it's exactly what your body deems to be appropriate given the circumstances so at least you can you can you can always think of it that way your body is on your side it's not against you um, it's actually a great way if someone's experiencing anxiety about something, always remind them that their body is serving them. So don't yes. think that you're, you're being attacked by your own body or, or addled or anything by right. your own body. It, it, you're, 
it's helping you. So whatever your cholesterol level is, know that your body is doing what it's supposed to do. Now, once again, in isolation, you can't say that that's enough to say, oh, cholesterol doesn't matter. Then look into, okay, does it actually matter? Does this have any implications? And then you start learning in that and it's like, okay, well, <laughs> no, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that that's been it, it's uh, I think a quote by Alvin Tolley said the illiterate of the 21st century is not those who cannot read and write. It is those who cannot learn, unlearn and relearn. Ah, yes. Yes. Good. I And like that. and 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 this is I mean, that quote, I I run a private membership here in Las Vegas. And our, our principal philosophy is based around stoicism and being Uh able to, being able to exercise humility while being knowledgeable, being able to respond and not react and put space in between the stimulus and your actions. Yep. Um, and, uh, and I'm, I've, I've been carnivore, carnivore based. I'm going to say carnivore based because I haven't been a hundred percent strict. Um, right. I, uh, but I, I turned into the, I turned into the nutrition guru of, uh, of the founding members, you know, and, uh, yeah. but that's what, this is what I have a passion for. I love getting into the nitty gritty and, uh, and everything that you put out is right up my alley. 